Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm filming a sit down book video for you today, which feels like a bit of a rarity, to be honest. I feel like I'm always vlogging now and haven't really done many sit downs since I've moved. But I thought today I would come up with you with a fully bookish video, which would be nice. Um, which I asked about on my Instagram probably like a month ago now and I'm just sitting down to film it now. So sorry if you aren't the people who responded to this video, this ask and then nothing has come of it until now. But here we are. So I asked on Instagram, what's a book that you would love to find a twin of? What's a book that you would love to be able to read again for the first time? Um, because I was sort of dwelling on, oh, cute dog. Sorry, there's a massive husky outside. I was dwelling on this idea of like favorite books and sort of how I can recreate those feelings because I'm not much of a rereader and I also don't think that rereading gives me the same experience second time round so I'm sort of reluctant to do it in case I ruin the magic of the first time I loved that book does that make sense so I pulled out some titles that a few people um had named and these are uh, of books that I also have read and really loved because I thought that would be the best way for me to suggest other books for you um and I've got so the book that you liked and then a book that I've read that I think you would also enjoy and then also a book that's on my TBR that I feel like is in the same vein because I thought that might be fun just to share some books that are on my TBR none of these are actually on my physical TBR right now so they're looking them up was like oh maybe I should start writing my Christmas present list and put some of these books on there so that was quite fun I'm gonna hold up some of the books and others I don't have copies of so you're gonna see pictures also excuse the cash set up it's like a Saturday afternoon I just want to chill on my bed um so I haven't like got you propped anywhere properly so sorry if that's um not a great angle but whatever we move might actually just adjust you a tiny bit so you're a little bit straighter. Is that any better? Don't think so. Okay, so the first book is, of course, My Year of Rest and Relaxation. We have a lot of Moshevek Mosh stands on um, on here, and this is a very well-loved book, and a book that I actually loved so much. Um, it's my favourite. I've only read two Moshevek's, but it's definitely my favourite, which I feel like is the basic one to make your favourite. But I don't know, like, everything I've read, nothing just compares to this. I feel like the isolation, I read this... Um, pre-pandemic and I can feel like a lot of people who read it during the pandemic lockdowns were maybe like oh this is too close to home for me but at the time when I read it I really really enjoyed it and I feel like Moshfeg does like single woman moving really well depressed woman moving she um, hones in on that inner mindset of a person and creates this agitation and this um anticipation of something bad always going to be happening next um it's very much still a musing on like big metaphysical ideas um thinking about grief and death and isolation and loneliness and privilege um and yeah i'm sure if you have read this you'll be seeking other opportunities to feel like this way again so my recommendation if you loved atesha moshvik is to read my gal olivia this is one of my favorite books of the year so far it's also an underrated read in my humble opinion in the literary fiction world i've got grace and jay to um read it since i loved it and they both really enjoyed it as well so that's a a triple strike on the hotties for you if you um, are looking for multiple approvals. This is Asylum Road by Olivia Sujic. Um, this came out in during the pandemic in twenty in I think April twenty twenty one, um, and it follows two protagonists who, on a road trip down the south of France, meet up with some cousins, have some very odd interactions, and then arrive back home and end up taking a homecoming visit um back to the Anya the um woman in the story her parents home in Sarajevo which was where she fled from as a child but her parents and extended family still live so she fled to Glasgow and was raised by an aunt um, and the rest of her family stayed as well as some family friends and children she grew up with so it's it's in similar to my Everest and relaxation in creating that that feeling of isolation throughout i feel like this cover just says like 
terrified deer in the headlights, similar to this woman. Um, and also ponders on grief um, as well as as well as the unsureness unsureness of um, being a young woman in present time. I feel like both these books do um, interior minds of women really well, and particularly in Sujo's book, she really creates these really visceral and uncomfortable scenes that you have to sit through, which I feel like are um, testament to the power of the writing um, because they're so jarring to read. Um, there's this one scene at a dinner table with a ring. There's this one other scene in the same house with these two sofas opposite each other. And I, I think about them regularly. Um, so yeah, this is commenting a lot again um, on migration, on movement and sort of like ghosts of your past which i feel like is a theme in my every rest and realization like trying to attempt to forget the things that have happened to you or the lives that you have lived previously i think it's done brilliantly in asylum road so those two i feel like are based on vibe alone like i don't really feel like the stories are that similar but i just feel like if you like this you should give this a go i know it in my heart guys um, and then the book i haven't read but i'm desperate to read is Catch the Rabbit, and this is most similar to um, Asylum Road because it's set in a similar um, political conversation. So this was on my radar. I got an, an a galley ages ago, and then and then Claire over on her channel did a um, really brilliant review of it, and then CJ reminded me of it because I'm pretty sure Jay just bought it for CJ, or maybe the other way around, and I was like re remembering why I wanted to read this. So it says that Sarah hasn't heard from her childhood best friend um, in years. She's comfortable with her life in Dublin and her partner, but when her best friend calls and demands she comes home to Bosnia, she finds she can't say no. They go on a road trip as the two women set off to find the missing brother towards who disappeared towards the end of the Bosnian war, presumed dead by everyone, but Sarah believes she was still alive. So it says it looks at memory and the things she thought she knew when she was a girl, the social and religious lines that separated them and the way that they have brought together in such different lives. So I feel like it will be very much um, in conversation with this, although um, Catch the Rabbit is a translated piece of work. So um, that would also be a brilliant thing. Um, uh, just like another part of the conversation to read about in terms of the Balkans and uh, that piece of history. So that's one that's on my radar. Okay, next up is a controversial book, not really, just that like none of my friends really liked it as much as I did. And that's, I've got a proof that it's Memorial by Brian Washington, his first full length piece of fiction writing after the success of Lot. So this is, um, I don't know why this book struck me um, and has stayed with me so much as when I read it, because I think if I reread it now, maybe it wouldn't be as extraordinary as when I read it the first time round. But I think I was just so taken aback by Washington's um, very deliberate choices to, in terms of time and place and where we meet the two main characters. So this follows Mike and Benson, a um, couple living in Houston, follow as Mike's mother comes into town just as he is taking off um, to, taking off to Japan to visit his dying father. And then we follow sort of a dual timeline of Mitsuku and Benson in Houston, a mother-in-law and son-in-law's um, attempt to get to know each other through the means of cooking and um, Benson, no, Mike and his dad back in Japan, closing down his bar, um, saying goodbye to the locals as um, he prepares for the end of his life essentially um i think yeah i was just struck by the odd family dynamics that were chosen i've never read a book with that um relationship in it in terms of mother-in-law and son-in-law of a failing slash semi-abusive um relationship and i also just love the way i love the way washington does dialogue which isn't for anyone he's in the Rooney camp of no um, speech marks, of trading sentences, of ongoing conversations across pages, but I think it's really natural the way that he writes it. And um, I think it's saying some, yeah, really quite profound things about um, the situations that we find ourselves in with, with people um, because we're so scared of being alone. 
But um, on that note, I think if you enjoyed this or you're thinking about reading this, or maybe if you liked the themes of this, but it wasn't exactly what you were looking for, then I would read Swimming in the Dark. This was one of my underrated fiction books of last year. And I still am pushing people to read this one because I feel like it is so brilliant and just not talked about enough. This is another um, gay romance, this time set behind the Iron Curtain. So it's set in 1980s Poland as um, religion is losing its grip or loosening its grip on the country and communism and the Polish Workers' Party are um, also losing power and it follows Ludwig and um, Janusz as they meet at a university um, agricultural sort of like work away um, and are tentatively get involved in a relationship. It's very much about power dynamics. Um, in a similar way to Memorial, when we look at the different um, racial identities of our two main characters and that conversation around identity politics, around um, universal struggle. And I think the same can be said in um, Swimming in the Dark between Janus and Ludwig, this idea of love can win over those sort of like structural barriers between people, um, less about um racial divide in swimming in the dark much more about class classism and the different ways you can find yourself um in a repressive society how you can work to either in the system um believe in social mobility and bribery and all those sort of like underhanded things in order to get what you need it to, in order to buy your way into freedom um whereas the Ludwig is very much not, um, doesn't abide by those rules. And I think it's again, a really turbulent relationship to witness um, and not necessarily a romance, more a, yeah, like I said, a story of repression, of divide, of barriers, but it's written in a, a, written in a way that you foreground this relationship and you watch all the other things happen in the background. And I think that's what I loved so much about this book, but in terms of like, youthfulness and love and loss and rebuilding of things um i think that swimming in the dark and memorial both speak to those ideas really brilliantly and a book on my tbr which i think is um similar to these mostly on the themes of queerness and relationships is notes of a crocodile this was published in 2018 it's a translated from the chinese i believe yeah um, so this is set in 1980s Taipei and it says this is the post martial law era and it's a coming of age story of queer misfits. So again, that's speaking to swimming in the dark themes of um, like po po political unsettled background noise and um, queerness being an active uh, identity that is very much marginalized. Although in memorial set in present day, there is a assumption that um most people in these characters lives are accepting of their sexual identity um there is a conversation ongoing about aids in here and homophobic rhetoric from one of the couples one of the characters parents so um this says in terms of notes of a crocodile it follows a coming of age story between queer misfits discovering love and artistic affin affinity while attending Taiwan's most prestigious university. And we follow the story through the eyes of an anonymous lesbian narrator um, looking at, and it's mixed together between diaries, vignette, vignettes and satire, which I think um, is similar to a memorial because um, Brian Washington uses mixed media in this book. He uses photographs. Like I said, he uses like um, layouts of um, dialogue in different ways and the language is just like very much a cultural marker of the story and it sounds like that's going to be similar in here so this says it looks at gender and radical self-inquiry and social defiance um, featuring characters like a rich kid turned criminal a self-destructive gay lover and a bored mischievous overachiever oh this sounds so good I really want a copy um this might have to be on my Christmas list. Okay, up next, I don't have a copy of this book and I'll tell you why. This is one of my favorite books of all time. This is a pre-Bookstagram book for me, but the paperback cover of this is so ugly. I hate it. I think I've got grace to read this, I'm pretty sure. Um, 
but the hardback copy is so pretty and i read it out of the library back when we lived in brighton like the first year i lived there but i still think about it all the time and that is a place for us i was first turned on to this book i believe by jen did an interview with the author this is like years ago i'm talking and then i got tom to read it and it's a book that i um always recommend to people in my life who are like oh, I want to get back into reading I'm like oh, just read this like it's it's underrated so um a place for us follows an Indian American Muslim family it's very much a family saga talking about migration from India to California and it follows multiple strands of the family each of the children having a life event going on so there's like an eldest daughter with who's about to get married and very much like follow in the um ideals of her mother whilst choosing a um, marriage of love instead of an arranged marriage have the parents in the book have an arranged marriage that's um in some respects quite unhappy um and they talk a lot about that in there and then we have um amar who is struggling with his identity very much in um his place in the family and ends up being a strain for them for a long time he deals with substance abuse disorder issues and um it's a story of family in terms of family loyalty but also of assimilation and this idea of like transplanting your traditions from one place to another and protecting your children and what you can do to how do you help your children who have um who have become the people that you never wanted them to be and i think it speaks a lot on you like i say tradition and um well as like mental health and gender gender norms gender expectations for people and families um but i just think it's such a brilliant like plotty well-written well-explored family saga which i feel like is rare to get one that's like does all of those things at once and if you loved this then you you should read america is not the heart by elaine castillo this should actually be the other way around i've just realized but i'm not going to refilm this clip because most people would have read america is not the heart given this is the book that i shout about all the time um so american is not the heart is um similarly a family saga following the devira family um and sort of an extended group of um filipino immigrants and transplants who move following the marcos regime in the philippines and they um our main character hero flees after being entangled in a militant group and sort of working as an unqualified doctor in some of these um guerrilla activist movements who were working against the regime and we follow her life um in san francisco as an undocumented person getting to grips with her new family and flashing back to her life in the philippines and i feel like this again is a family saga of quite complex narratives talking a lot about migration tradition it features food really heavily which so does a place for us um here looking at um the filipino community in in the in california and expectations and qualifications that it, that you have to live up to in a community that prides itself on its culture um and i think a place for us is very much about what other people think of you and your family and um making sure that you are representing the good immigrant that you are the person in the you're not someone who can be gossiped about in the community and i feel like the same goes for america is not the heart there's a brilliant queer um relationship running through this um which is so really brilliant to see that cross section of um cultures and queerness and i just oh if i could read this book all over again i would um so if you have read this then read a place for us and vice versa the book on my tbr which i don't i think is out in the states but i don't think it's out in the uk yet and that is tell me how to be by neil patel so this follows um again an indian american family but in los angeles it says that um Rainey thought she had everything perfect but on the one year anniversary of her husband's death she wondered as if she 35 years ago if she chose the wrong life in los angeles her son akash has a everything he ever wanted but he tries to kickstart his singing career and commit to his boyfriend he's haunted by the previous memories of the life he fled when his mother tells him he's selling the family home she akash returns to illinois to say goodbye they pack up the house and retreat back into those secrets renu looking sending a facebook message to the man she almost married and akash slipping back into those bad habits with the boy who broke his heart 
Their past catch up on them and they must decide about the lives they left behind and the ones they've created since. So it said it's filled with the beats of 90s R&B, irreverent and tender. This is a book about betrayal and the cost of reconciliation, the story of a mother and son. So again, it's got that far, it's got that family saga element to it in terms of um, intergenerational conversations between people. Um, and I think similarly to a place for us, it looks again at the Indian American specifically experience and those crossovers. It's got that touch of queerness with the eldest son and his um love interest and i think yeah it just sounds like it's going to be a good blend of those two conversations so i'm excited to read that one and then this is this is my like personal this this is this is me this if you didn't know if you're new to my channel or have been living under rock this is my favorite book of all time um ocean vong's on earth were briefly gorgeous i love it so much that changing my arm i have it tattooed on my arm so I must be a really big fan. Um, this is a story, an extended letter from Little Dog to his mother who cannot read, telling of his experiences coming of age in a small town in America after their move or their immigration from Vietnam. It's a beautiful story of queerness, of um, coming of age, of finding yourself. It backgrounds the opioid crisis, um, poverty, destitution, recession, um, assimilation. It looks a lot at masculinity and migration and the travel um, that you go through, not just through moving place, but through uprooting yourself and um, sort of the chameleon nature you take on when you live in a place that is not the place that you were born, particularly of, an, of a different culture. Um, it's beautiful and poetic. Um, Ocean Vuong is a poet before he was a novelist. So every sentence just sings. And I think it's, um, you could just get lost in his phrasing over and over again. So this obviously is a book that I love and a book that I read for the first time this year and reminded me so much of um, Ocean's work is in the end, it was all about love by Musa Okwonga. Musa is a brilliant writer, again, a poet, again, talking a lot about migration. So this is semi-autobiographical. Um, it follows a story of a man who moves from the UK to Berlin um, following ongoing political unrest in the UK in terms of um, safety for young black men. And we, um, arrive in Berlin with him when he's exploring his sexuality, his aloneness and his, again, assimilation into a new place. And then as he approaches his 40th birthday, he wants to visit the grave of his father who died in Uganda. And we go on that trip with him to um, experience his grief for another year and sort of compare the life he lived with the life that his father lived and whether or not he feels he is living up to um, that legacy and that name. Um, so firstly, on a language level, I feel like these are really similar because this they're both written by poets and particularly in um, Moose's book, there is extracts of poetry that you can read um, that fit in as part of the narrative. Um, the This one is written in the second person, whereas Ocean Vong's book is written as a, a like I say, an extended letter. But it plays a lot with language as Vong does and tells that story of movement um, really beautifully. Reflections on culture, on what you leave behind when you move, um, what you inherit from parents, um, good and bad, and what it means to be a young queer man, um, which is it's just beautiful and so vulnerable and raw on loneliness, on grief, on um, acceptance of self and solely 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 underrated so if you can get your hands on this it's published by rough trade books i think you can get it on bookshop and a couple of other places i will link any like links down below um i just think it's absolutely stunning so that would be my comparison there and then the book that's on my tbr that i think sounds quite similar in some respects because i believe it's also written by a poet and it's Permafrost by Eve Bala Balzar. And this is translated. The original language is Catalan, which is the region of Spain, but I didn't know if, I didn't know the language was called Catalan. I thought it would be cool like 
cat in the knees. That doesn't really make sense either. Anyway, so it's translated from Catalan. And it says, Permafrost no bullshit lesbian narrator is an uninhibited lover and a wickedly funny observer of modern life. Desperate to get out of Barcelona, she goes to Brussels because a city whose symbol is a little boy pissing was a city I knew I would like. (laughs) Um, Full of powerful imagery written by an acclaimed poet. Um, It's a breathtaking look at freedom, solitude, body and self. And I feel like those are themes I feel in both of the books I previously mentioned. So this seems very much more um, in interior focus so it says um as an au pair in scotland she develops a hatred for the color green and everywhere she goes she wants to break out of the role set by her family and society chasing escape wherever she can love affairs travel suicide um both of these books also deal with themes of suicidality and um suicidal ideation so i feel like that's another theme although the protagonists in both of these are young men and obviously this is written and the protagonist is a woman but again has that theme of queerness running through it so i think this sounds really beautiful um it's published by an indie press i believe uh and other stories and it's out came out on the 6th of april this year okay and the final book i have to talk about is mayflies by andrew o'hagan this was a piece of scottish literature published last year i'm gonna say maybe 2019 um very much a cradle to grave sort of story following the life of Ali and james we visit them first in early 80s scotland in thatcher era at the job center at the river at the bottom of their um rapidly deindustrializing town um they have little hope for prosperity and decide to um have a weekend bender in manchester it's very much about working class youth culture at the time and then we fast forward almost 40 years um where tully is living with terminal cancer and coming to the end of his life and we watch these two boys become men and shed that toxic masculine attempt to be something that they're not sort of um guys they were holding on to in their youth and they just flourish in this friendship that is so beautiful um again it's about movement because we visit them in london they go to switzerland they um go up and down the coast visiting friends and family sort of tully's always thinking about this being his last chance his last time to do the things that he loved when he was a child or a youth um but friendship really is at the heart of this book and it's so beautiful and so rare I feel like to read um such an honest depiction of male um friendship that I loved so much so this is um not similar in theme really but a book that I adored that's another by another Scottish writer is Scabby Queen by Kirsten Inez um which is a cradle to grave story following following this Scottish um folk singer Cleo Campbell um we open the book at her death and work backwards so it's very much the opposite in terms of like aging to this story but um we follow her up and down the country from Scotland again to London to America, to all these places where she has left her mark with people, with friends, with family. Um, and it's one of those stories, similar to A Place for Us, actually, in America's Not the Heart, where you really fall into the life of these characters and watch as um, the choices she made impacts the choices that she will have. And a story of losing that youthful optimism and falling in with people who don't have your best interests at heart it has a lot of different subplots at it similar to mayflies although those tangents are kept quite short in sabby queen you can spend chapters with other people um just with other people um and i just think it's a beautiful story of second chances almost of redemption which i feel like is a theme in mayflies as well as of growing of changing of admitting your previous mistakes and i just that book and some of the scenes in it have stuck in my head for a really long time and it's one of those super long books that doesn't feel long at all so if you want to really like dig your teeth into something 
um, over a long weekend or you've got a week off work. I feel like Cleo Campbell's life feels so real. It almost like should have been a memoir. Um, so yeah, they are my Scottish picks. And then a book that's on my TBR, which I feel like is in the same vein uh, thematically as opposed to plot driven is Careless by Kirsty Cape. So this is a story of the care system um, and it's based or not based, but it's um, using some of Kirstie Cage's own life. She is a care leaver herself. Um, so we follow Bess, the main protagonist, who finds herself pregnant as a teenager by an older man. Um, she herself is a is a foster child living in the care system, and we backtrack on her history, her own family dynamic, how she um, ended up in long term care, and I guess. It sounds like it also looks at the tr- the intergenerational trauma, the um, s- the cycle of poverty people can be stuck in, um, and ideas within that on changing of coming of age of growing. And I think in Mayflies we see that so evidently with Tully and James when we we flash forward those years and see how much they've um, rounded out as people, as men, and it sounds like, um, like Careless will do the same, so, um, yeah, that's one that's been on my radar for a while that I'm also looking forward to, surprisingly, um, as if that's not the theme of this video. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this quite random, eclectic mix of books that I have, um, strung together in some thematic sense in order to talk to you about a random group of books that I like. Um, if you would like another one of these, then please let me know because I do have an ongoing list of books, um, book pairings that I put together. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!